Welcome back to Doing Business in Rwanda. Like most developing countries, Rwanda has a number of challenges to overcome. We join Lois Washira for details on how Rwanda's private sector faces up to these challenges. Geographic positioning, poor infrastructure and income inequality are among the hurdles Rwanda faces on its journey to becoming economically stable. We being a landlocked country, there is a challenge of, of not, for example, majority of the things that we have to import, uh, the cost of transport coming, bringing goods up to here, inputs for factories becomes, uh, accounts for over 40% over of the cost of whatever good land is here. And you can imagine what that means in terms of competitiveness. If you have to export back to, say, Kenya, Tanzania, your products would be less competitive than those that are near the cost. Uh, we also still have a challenge of uh, energy, uh, both reliability and availability. The first challenge that you'd imagine is that, um, again, the, the, as a small market um, that is not yet to the size or as mature as most of the, as of the neighboring countries, again, so, uh, you know, educating people both locally and uh, outside the country about the benefits that uh, that are bound in the country uh, is taking um, fruit, but again, not as fast as one would wish. Uh, the other one, obviously, um, in terms of privatization, is um, you know the level because privatization requires a very uh, systematic process where the people driving the process understand the benefits and have the ability to articulate those benefits uh, to the people that they meet. And in the past, obviously, the level of uh, appreciation of that has not been there. People have taken time to appreciate, uh, you know, the, the benefits that a company would get by being privatized and also being able to address the challenges around skills and, and capacity uh, to be able to achieve that. But all that is now taking shape. In its effort to address the challenges, the Private Sector Federation creates platforms like the Golden Circle event held in Kigali, giving the business community the opportunity to meet and discuss various issues related to their areas of operation and to come up with strategies to improve this fundamental sector. We are now developing a, a private sector strategy. Uh, the, the strategy we'd like really to, to implement, to facilitate uh, our private sector to develop is to, to think about what are the main uh, binding constraints which may impede uh, smooth development of the private sector and see how this may be addressed. If government says they want a private sector led economy, I mean, me as private sector federation, I can't undertake investments, you know. <laughs> I have to rely on my members to, to, to undertake those investments. If it is export promotion, to critically understand what export promotion means where do we get the markets from? Which markets do we target? What products do we take there? It is not me. It is the, the operators themselves. So we, we, we then zeroed down to a concept of the golden circle, uh, picking strategic uh, operators from different sectors, bringing them together, so that when we, we have programs to run you know, or, or, or expectations to convey or um, issues to discuss, you know, or opportunities to share, we have a, a cross-section cross of, of operators that we can talk to. For the private sector to make an impact on the country's vision of industrializing and become a main contributor to Rwanda's economy, continued government support and substantial investment in this sector is not debatable. Traditionally, uh, Rwandan small private operators used to have the culture of uh, operating in a very isolated manner. And uh, uh, this has, in my view, been a major concern because uh, isolated, uh, the capacity to implement significant projects was very, very limited. But coming together by creating an investment group, which may take advantage of big investment opportunity, is creating a huge room for a bigger number of people in the private sector to participate in massive investment operation. And I think that's going to contribute a lot. The future is good. The future is brighter. We, we have a very rare advantage in Rwanda that uh, many other countries in the East African community or even around the world may, may not have. We have a very supportive government. We have a private sector thinking government. The leadership in Rwanda believes in private sector. In other places, uh, private sector exists on its own. 
And all you hear is government, government, government. Public sector is strong and they don't care about what happens. In this country, uh, it is so different. I'll give you a practical example. Rwanda, the government is now undertaking what they call uh, economic, uh, uh, economic policy and poverty and education programs, EDPRS2. They have insisted that every ministry, every ministry clearly highlights private sector's role in the development of that sector of ministry. That in itself underpins the importance government is giving to the private sector. And never before, this time we might see so much happening in private sector growth. Uh, so the future about private sector in Rwanda, uh, unless something unexpected happens, well, the future is brighter. The full extent of Rwanda's private sector's potential is yet to be realized and government is ready to work with investors towards these goals and drive the economy forward to a better future.